It's Subverted Tropes, a podcast about movies, featuring your hosts, Daniel Spencer and Kate Harlow. Welcome to another episode of Subverted Tropes. I'm Dan. I'm Kate. How are you doing, Kate? I'm real good. Good to hear. Me too. You know why? Why? Because we're on a cruise right now. Yeah, we are. Not at this moment that we're recording this, but at the moment that this but is released. But when this is released? We're cruise bound. We're cruising. We're yeah, going on we, a Disney cruise. Because we, we usually schedule a little release around 8 a.m. And mm-hmm. we're not boarding until close to 11. But we are in Florida. In Florida. We are heading from the Magic Kingdom to, uh, mm, I don't remember the name of the port. The port from which Disney Cruise Lines sails out of. Port Canaveral. Of course, Port Canaveral. That's what it is. At the time that this is being released, we'll have been awakened, and we're getting some breakfast. Yep. We're eating a bunch of eggs. Oh, yeah. And then we're we're getting in a limo and driving to, from the Magic Kingdom to Port Canaveral to board a boat. A big old boat. What do boats make you think of? Well, boats make me think of... What do boats make me think of? I guess boats make me think of a nearby park here in North Carolina. Uh, that has little paddle boats that you can rent out. It's Pullen Park. Oh, I haven't been to Pullen Park. It'll my mom be... took my niece to Pullen Park when she was here in January, and they have a beautiful carousel, and they told me all about it. Yeah. But I was six, so I couldn't go. We're going to have to go. We got to go. Especially with your niece. Yes. Yes, please. Because I will die a thousand happy deaths watching the two of you on a carousel together. <laughs> so we're talking about boats. Now Oops. we're talking about dying a thousand deaths. I feel like you're setting the stage pretty well. I am, and I'm not even doing it on purpose. Today's movie, since we have a sense of irony, <laughs> uh, we're going to be talking about Titanic. Yep. A cruise that went badly. Yeah, it didn't go great. No. I mean, from what I understand, while it was going, it was pretty great, but it was when it stopped going that it got real bad real fast. Yeah, uh, they just all got real tired or something, just really hit a wall. And it just the party just the party just died. They decided to split. Too soon? <laughs> I don't think it's fair to say too soon, but too soon. <laughs> so nineteen twelve sinking of the RMS Titanic has been covered in over ten different movies. Hot diggity. Until one, 19- uh, one of them uh was a real bad one called Raising the Titanic. Raising the Titanic. Yes. <laughs> I know someone who once had a pornographic parody of that movie called Titanic. (laughs) Until 97, Mm -hmm. the movie that was widely regarded to be the best version of the Titanic story was 1958's A Night to Remember. Though, speaking of too soon, I would love to see the German version that came out in 1912, like... They started working on it days after the tragedy. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it's got to be somewhere. Yeah. So director, writer, producer James Cameron had always had an obsession with shipwrecks. Like you do. He was... See, I, I know a lot about Titanic because this came out like in those really formative years for me. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, so I do have a lot of like factual knowledge about this. But I'm also kind of, I'm curious about what you've dug up because you have a lot of pages of research. I usually have like a page of research total. This time I have two pages of research before we watch the movie. Mm -hmm. This might be a little bit of a longer one, guys. Just like the movie. I was going to say, corresponding appropriately to the movie. Uh, James Cameron is literally obsessed <laughs> with shipwrecks, though. He is, yeah. That was how the whole thing got started. Yeah, it, that's exactly it. He called Titanic the Mount Everest of shipwrecks. I guess, I mean, I guess I can see that. Except, you know what? I'm not going to try and tear apart James Cameron's logic. It's fine. Uh, so he actually had a scientific background in school. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was uh, attending school for physics. And then switched to English, and then switched to dropout. See, I just cut out the middleman entirely. I just didn't I know, even go. right? I oh no, I was going to say I didn't bother switching majors, but <laughs> I switched schools. <laughs> I stayed in my school, the school of hard knocks. <laughs> mm-hmm. The my school was the streets. <laughs> <It> was not. <laughs> my school was Wolf Camera. 
Mm, yeah, there you go. And then a portrait studio, and then Macy's, and then various phone based customer support roles. You're 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 a scholar of life. Sure. Let's go with that. Uh so um James Cameron wanted to use his scientific background to engage in an undersea expedition. And uh he saw IMAX footage of a uh, dive to the Titanic's remains. Mm-hmm. Remains? Remains. Yeah, I think rem- that stands. And that's when he decided, I'm going to make this movie. Wreckage. He said, quote, not because I particularly wanted to make the movie. I wanted to dive the shipwreck. Yep. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> so he pitched the movie idea to 20th Century Fox, and executive uh, Peter Chernin had several questions. Yeah. <laughs> James Cameron had sold the movie as Romeo and Juliet on the Titanic. Mm-hmm. So their questions were largely, how do Terminator Terminator 2, Rambo Part 2, Aliens, and The Abyss, his larger films yeah, before that. The ones he was known for. How do those tie into the making of a three-hour-long romance movie on a sinking ship? They're all Terminators. They're all Terminators. Okay, so, well, you've <laughs> ruined the movie now for those who haven't seen it. Sorry, guys. It's only 20 years old. Yeah. <laughs> 21 this movie can drink 21 <gasps> well actually no it I wasn't released it. until december so on the rocks <clears throat> i'm so proud of you <laughs> 20th century was very concerned about how this project might do with the billing of romeo and juliet on the on, on the a boat sinking ship yeah but uh they greenlit it because they wanted James Cameron to do more stuff for their studio in the future. So that's, they fi- they figured if we do this, let it's him solid do his for him. let him do his one crazy passion project and then he'll get back to what we think he knows best. Precisely. Mm-hmm. Over the next 2 years, James Cameron and his crew would shoot footage of the actual wreck, developing an understanding of the ship's layout as well as the emotional weight of the event. To quote Cameron again, it was an event that happened to real people who really died. Working around the wreck for so much time, you get such a strong sense of the profound sadness and injustice of it and the message of it. I don't necessarily disagree, but I feel like he made those statements as though they were revolutionary. Oh, yeah. And they're not. Anybody, Schindler's List, like anybody who has done any work on uh, like... World War II and the Holocaust, like they've got sites they can really go to and acknowledge and feel the immense personal weight of. Yeah. It's, uh, there's, there's a few things that Cameron and a couple other people say about their work on this movie. It just is, it, it brings about eye rolls from me. Yeah. But that's also like, I'm going to go on record. I'm not a big fan of this movie. No. It feels way too long. It feels up its own butt. Mm -hmm. It's just not... I haven't seen it in a very, very, very long time. I liked it very much when it came out, and I was super young. But uh, I don't necessarily think that that will bear out as much now. If you still like this movie after after we watch it tonight, Mm -hmm. you're wrong, and I don't want to be in a boat with you. Wait a minute. You don't mean that. You're very excited I don't. about this I'm trip. I'm very excited about this boat we're about to get on. <laughs> um yeah, I'm I'm curious to see how it uh how it carries for me. I had a when it was released on video, uh and it was two VHS tapes worth That's right. of this is a very long film. Uh I had a birthday party where I had friends over and we watched it. I have more anecdotes related to that, but I'll save them. Awesome. Cameron began writing the script after all the underwater shots had been collected. And he dedicated himself to researching as much as he could about the crew and the passengers, creating a detailed timeline of their story. Mm -hmm. They utilized the actual blueprints for the ship, which Mm -hmm. uh, were shared by Harland and Wolf from their private archives. Mm -hmm. Everyone assumed that those blueprints were gone, lost forever. Nice. Uh, And he stated he wanted the movie to essentially be seen as if you'd gone back in time to film the actual events. So now it's time to cast this movie full of largely fictional characters. (laughs) 
For the character of Jack Dawson, a poor orphan from Wisconsin, several actors were considered. Mm -hmm. Matthew McConaughey, 28 years old. (laughs) Chris O'Donnell, 25 years old. Billy Crudup, 27 years old. And Stephen Dorff, 22, were all brought up by 20th Century Fox. But Cameron passed on them because they were too old to believably play 20. Yeah. He had his sights set on Tom Cruise, 33 years old. But this was, I mean, what year did Aladdin come out? Young, younger Tom Cruise, like he hit an age and he like hit a wall and he was like his face hit a wall. But up until that, he had that very, very young face that the like, we're going to steal his likeness for Aladdin face. And that stuck for a long time. Pretty sure Aladdin was, no, I'm not even going to, I want to say 92. It was early 90s. I digress. Tom Cruise had his, his asking price was way too high. Of course it was. So they they passed on him. He also probably didn't believe that the boat actually sank. I mean... That sounds like the kind of crazy thing a Scientologist would say. It does. Sorry, all of the Scientologist listeners we have, all none of you. Sorry, not sorry. Y'all's whack. Y'all's whack. You heard it here first, folks. Scientologist, y'all's whack. <laughs> so James Cameron approached garbage human Jared Leto. <laughs> But Leto did not care about this movie. He was like, I just don't, I have no interest in being in this movie. Fair. So casting director Molly Finn brought 21-year-old Leonardo DiCaprio to Cameron's attention. And he was brought in for an audition. And God, he looks younger than... Yeah. Than, like, he, he had that baby face for a long time. Baby face. Yeah, he had that baby face for a long time. <laughs> and uh, DiCaprio did not like the role either. Ha! <laughs> oh. So, he did not take the audition seriously at all. He was just futzing around. Oh no, oh no, he played right into the character. James Cameron saw something in the audition, probably exactly that, mm-hmm. uh, that convinced him that he was the right person for Jack. And when they were doing auditions along with other people, mm-hmm. uh he wound up auditioning with Kate Winslet, and Kate Winslet went up to James Cameron and said, hey, even if you don't pick me, pick him. He is perfect for it. <laughs> and so they got him. They Good James job, Cameron Kate Winslet. <laughs> talked some sense into him, and he took the role seriously. For the character of Rose, who's a 17-year-old from Philadelphia, uh, they saw several actresses, mm-hmm. including Gwyneth Paltrow. Nope. Winona Ryder. Meh. Claire Danes. Gabrielle Anwar and uh, Reese Witherspoon. Mm, no. They all turned down the role. And so Kate Winslet saw an opportunity and campaigned to be cast in the role. Cameron did not want to hire her. He didn't like her for the role at all. Oh. Her screen test impressed him, but he was looking for more of an Audrey Hepburn type in the role and didn't think that Kate Winslet fit that mold. So she was not taking no for an answer. Ha. She sent him a single rose with a card that she signed saying, from your rose. <laughs> she got his car phone number back when car phones exist. For our younger listeners, car phones were around before the days of actual cell phones. Mm-hmm. They would be in your car. They would work like as a it's, phone. It's part of your car. It, but it's part of your car. Like it doesn't you come out of your car. It's not just like a burner phone that you leave sitting in the car. Like It's right. part of the car. So she found his car phone number and called him, pleading with him to cast her in the movie, saying, quote, I am Rose. I don't know why you're seeing other people. <laughs> her, her persistence is what Cameron cites as the reason she got the role. Basically, he was like, I just wanted her to stop. <laughs> so I gave her the role. I already got to do my deep sea exploring. Right. <laughs> the rest of this is just making everybody It's all else. just gravy. Yep. Matthew McConaughey may have been too old for Jack, but he was offered the role of Cole Hockley, the 30-year-old to whom 17-year-old Rose is engaged. I mean, I hear you, but Billy Zane. He turned it down. <laughs> Rob and that, Lowe lobbied for it. The the oh okay, Rob Lowe. The face that you made when I said Billy Zane. I just don't not, like Billy Zane. I'm not like a huge fan of him, 
but he's that part. No, without a doubt. That's, he's just as much of an asshole as this role is. Yeah. So the 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 role went to Billy Zane, which obviously. is which is why I say like it, like no, but I I don't know. I would have had trouble watching Rob Lowe be a dick. I like Rob Lowe. I mean, Rob Lowe's great. He's Chris Traeger. It's I mean, it was many years down the road, but I have always had a fondness for Rob Lowe. So Fay Ray, mm-hmm. one of the original scream queens in the original King Kong, mm-hmm. had been asked to play Rose. In old old Rose, yeah, old Rose. It's hard to say in current times because it's still it's still twenty years ago. Years ago, but <laughs> twenty one years ago. So Fay Ray was asked, and she said she felt like that would have been a horrifying experience, and turned it down. <laughs> so it went to Gloria Stewart. Gloria Stewart is amazing. Yes, she was eighty six when she was filming this movie, mm-hmm. and uh, obviously had makeup to make her look. Hundred, mm-hmm. but uh, she'd been in movies like The Old Dark House, <gasps> one of my personal favorites, The Invisible Man, mm-hmm. and Poor Little Rich Girl. Mm-hmm. And she did such a great job in this movie that she garnered the oldest person to ever be nominated uh, for supporting actress. Oh, actually, I think just the oldest nominee. Yeah. Uh, in Academy history at the time. Wow. Maybe she might still have it, too. I should check on that. Yeah. Uh, she felt like she might have won, but too much of her performance was cut from the final movie. Oh, boo. Yeah. Though I will say I have mercilessly made fun of Old Rose as a character. <laughs> Agreed. I'm going to take this expensive boat trip and give you the history of this artifact that you're looking for, but I secretly have it, and I'm going to throw it back in the ocean and then die in your fucking boat. (laughs) So it's funny. There's a lot of speculation on that particular ending, and there's more to it as well, uh, which we'll get to after we watch the movie. But there's speculation over whether whether she dies or not. (laughs) <laughs> There's a lot of, like, it's up in the air. Mm-hmm. Uh, both Kate Winslet and Gloria Stewart are of the opinion that she did. Yeah. But there's just a lot of... I mean... Up in the air. Is that last bit a dream sequence, or is that... Anyway, we'll get to that. Uh, Robert De Niro was offered the role of the captain, but he couldn't take it because he had a gastrointestinal infection. Ooh, De Niro. Get your Tom in, in control, man. So... Casting was done. Mm-hmm. The script was written. It's time to start making this movie. Oh, golly. This was at the time the most expensive movie ever made. <laughs> this movie is clocked in at $200 million. It works out to be about $300 million nowadays. Which is like jump change. Jump change. <laughs> For today's Hollywood. Fox began to express concern. You know, I'm just going to keep doing it in that voice. Fox began to express concerns over the length and the cost of the movie, stating that a longer movie would reduce potential showings and generate less revenue. Cameron responded, You want to cut my movie? You're going to have to fire me. You want to fire me? (laughs) You're going to have to kill me. The studio felt that might be an extreme response. (laughs) So they opted not to do any of that, uh, and instead accepted his offer to forfeit his share of the profits. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. God damn. Yeah. Cameron. The uh, scene of the spoiler warning. Spoiler warning. Because I didn't put one before when I talk about Old Rose. <laughs> uh, the ship sinks. What? It does. No. Sorry. But in the scene where it does, uh, that was shot on a full-size set Mm -hmm. in a giant tank Mm -hmm. uh, with actors and stunt performers jumping off the ship. Yes. This caused a few injuries, nothing major, but uh, they decided that some of the more grueling stunts that they had planned were maybe a bit much (laughs) and opted to not. Pursue them. Mm -hmm. When Winslet and DiCaprio first met on set, Mm -hmm. they knew, like, they'd met each other in the audition. I was going to say, like, it's not like they first met. No. But, like, 
they had when they first met up on set mm-hmm. after having been cast in the movie, they both knew that there was going to be a nude scene. Mm-hmm. So Kate Winslet took it in her own hands to diffuse the awkwardness of the situation. And by it, I mean her shirt. She took it in her own hands and lifted it up and flashed Leonardo DiCaprio to get that awkwardness out of the way. And on the final night of shooting, uh, they were serving clam chowder to the cast and crew. And there were a couple of pranksters. Oh, no. Who put in... What would you... If you were going to prank people, what were you going... What would you mix into some clam chowder on the final night of a kind of grueling shoot? I, 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 I don't mess with people's foods. The pranksters mixed in PCP. Oh, Jesus. 80 people got very sick. More than 50 people were put in the hospital due to hallucinations. Oh, God. And they never found out who did it. Oh, my God. James Cameron realized what was going on and made himself excise the contents of his stomach. Oh, Jesus. Uh, Bill Paxton, who plays Brock, Mm -hmm. was, he said for the next, like, two weeks, he was just listless and couldn't do anything as after effects of PCB. Because it's that strong Mm -hmm. of uh, a narcotic. Don't do PCP. Do you do PCP, do you take PCP? I don't know, whatever I don't whatever know. it is. Don't mess with PCP, don't, listeners. Don't mess with drugs, guys. Just don't do it. There's, don't there's, mess with drugs. There's a time and a place and uh, a safe environment to do things, and usually uh, imparting drugs to people through their food substances is not a safe time and place to do it. No, and PCP in general is just one of those, it's just not a good idea just in don't. any situation. Just don't. Just don't. You know what you should? Don't. (laughs) That's going to be all the notes that I have before we watch this movie. Would you like to watch this movie? Let's go watch a movie. We'll be back in like 20 hours. (laughs) And we're back. Back. At least I think we're back. We're we're faded pretty hardcore. I don't have a concept of time anymore. (laughs) Uh, that is a very long movie. It's so long. And but it doesn't like, need to be that long. I mean, it doesn't need to be that long, but like, I don't see, I don't know, I don't see what to take out. That's fair. I it mean, was going to be four hours long. Of course it was. But 20th Century Fox was like, no. <laughs> no, we can make it three and it'll be fine. And James Cameron was all like, don't cut my movie. Well, you can cut that hour. That's the thing. Like, it's not overly repetitive or anything like that, but it's just long. Yeah. And I just, like, the whole time I was like, can this be cut out or do we need to? No, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. That's why you do all the editing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So one thing I forgot to mention was when James Cameron was talking about the emotional weight of the movie of the of being around the uh wreck he he said that he felt a great mantle of responsibility to convey the emotional message of Titanic because there may never be another filmmaker who goes to the wreck aside from a documentarian. Basically he's like this is very important for me to do because I'm the only person who's ever going to do it. How many people have done it since? Is there a number? Please give me a number. I wish there was. God damn it. I mean, come on, James. Get over yourself. Yeah, seriously. You you tricked the studio into letting you go on a boat expedition. That, that does not make you overwhelmingly clever, sir. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about that ending. Mm-hmm. So as we discussed earlier, there's a lot of speculation as to whether she's actually, she dies at the end there. I think she um, dies. So there's one particularly strong clue about that. Um, uh, and that's in the people who are there. or They're all people who died. More importantly, the people who aren't there. Yeah. Molly Brown, her mom, mm-hmm. Cal, like. Yeah. The people who. The people who didn't die. Survived aren't there. Exactly. So it's uh, kind of the big. 
that's, that's thing that everyone points to is like, oh no, yeah. she totally died. Like she knew she was going to die. She brought the thing, she brought the heart of the ocean with her so she could chuck it in the water it, and then put you. up all of the pictures from her life in this boat she was visiting and then die on the boat and make everybody's trip home very Really weird. awkward. Yeah. Super weird. Uh, hey, Tom, can we get you to fly that helicopter back in? We need to, you to uh, escort a corpse off of the boat. I mean, it's not uncommon for people to die at sea. Most boats are equipped with a morgue on board. Yes, morgue on board. Morgue on board. That makes me think of Charlotte's Web. I just want to rewrite the smorgasbord song to be about morgue on board. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's a that's a thing that happens. Like all cruise boats are equipped with onboard morgues uh, that are temperature controlled because they don't like they don't just drop the bodies off the side of the boat. Nope. Uh, nor do they drop them at whatever the next port of call is because then the family would be responsible with uh, for trying. Not only did their loved one die on a vacation and nobody was there with them, but they have to then retrieve that body from whatever country they're at. <laughs> so if you pay for a cruise, you're getting the whole fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about that ending. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not take a crazy detour this time. Don't make that face at me. <laughs> I'm so tired. I know, baby. So originally, we were supposed to get more of a resolution to Brock's story. Brock being the character played, he was gonna, uh, he was gonna finally hook up with the with the granddaughter. So I think they were leaning towards that, but mostly. What was going to happen was that he and Rose were going to have a conversation. He was going to catch her out on the, the back of the boat. As I suggested that she should be watched because she has a habit of trying to jump off boats. And she was going to talk about how li- life is priceless. So why would you care about this? And she was going to let him hold the heart of the ocean and then take it back and then throw it in. And then he was going to laugh about how the past three years of his life was meaningless and that everything would be hilarious and fun. Uh, and then she'd go down to the deck to die. What a nihilistic ending. Right? So instead they just kind of took all of him out of that mm-hmm. and she just chucked it in herself. It's, and it's, yes, it's, I still I still believe that's a real dick move. Oh, yeah. No, without a doubt. Super dick <laughs> move. I'm really hoping that, like, as she was like, okay, I'm going uh, to turn in for the night, probably die, but, like, keep up the excavation, I guess. Just keep trying. Just keep looking for it. I'm sure you'll find it somewhere. Yeah. Probably best to go ahead and start looking for it, like, right now, like, right behind the boat before water sweeps it further away. Uh, yep. Sandy, is your, is your little dive robot out right now? Is it out right now? Oh, yeah. So right uh, now. Is, is Duncan it, is Duncan behind the boat? Send Duncan behind and Snoop the boat. Vision down there. Yeah, but like not too deep. Right, right, yeah. But like, like right behind the boat. Right, right behind the boat. Like imagine it like if I were to stick my arm off the back of the boat and just like let something go, like probably about the weight of like the heart of the ocean, then just like go oh just hang. Wait. Just chillax. Moana's already got it. And she's <sighs> taking it to Tefiti. Damn it. Oh. Well, this is just a mess. Mm-hmm. The drawing of Rose, mm-hmm. you know, in the buff. Dem titties. Dem. Yep. Boobies. That. I don't even like that. Juggernauts. There we go. <laughs> so it's a very good drawing. Mm-hmm. Was not done by Leonardo DiCaprio. You're breaking my childhood heart. Give me your hand. I don't think you're going to like this. It was done by James Cameron. No. No. So. No. I mean, he's very talented. I'm not here to speak well of him. He is a self-indulgent jag. Who was like, I didn't want you in this role, but now that you've convinced me to that you're going to be in this role, you're going to pose naked and I'm going to draw you. Okay? Okay. Let's make that happen. No. Okay. No. Very creepy. No. Uh, he's left-handed, so they had to basically reverse the shot mm-hmm. of him sketching. Mm-hmm. Just creepy. Kate Winslet's not a fan of James Cameron. You don't want to get me going on Kate Winslet and people that she's not a fan of or is a fan of right now because it's real late and I will talk a lot. Let's not do that. Let's not. She did say that she would have to be paid a lot of money to work with James Cameron again. Mm-hmm. The filming schedule was relentless and she got really bad bruises in a lot of scenes. One so bad that uh, the makeup people on the set took pictures of it. 
so that they could try and recreate it for future makeups where someone had a really bad bruise. Oh, man. Leonardo DiCaprio said, It was a tough shoot, but if he wanted, if he was ever going to make an action movie again, he wanted James Cameron to direct it. And I'm pretty sure that's happened with every action movie he's been in. Yeah, and I think that's the list. <laughs> no, I know he's been in action movies. I guess maybe you could call Inception. Like, yeah, but I feel like Inception's more of a thriller. Yeah. A psychological thriller. I think he's been in more thrillers and dramas. Yeah, Shutter Island. Um, oh, Shutter Island. Great Gatsby. The oh, Great Gatsby was a great action movie, though. There's that amazing car chase mm-hmm. where the car chases that girl and runs her over. <laughs> Oh, I'm so tired. Anyway, so both Winslet and DiCaprio look back on this movie and are very embarrassed of their performances. Fair. DiCaprio was like, ah, God, I was such a young punk. And Kate Winslet's like, my English accent was horrible. I was so flat in so many of these scenes. Just very funny. Yeah. Considering that Winslet would get uh, nominated for an Academy Award mm-hmm. for this. Mm-hmm. 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 Um, so how about that music? Uh, it's by the same guy who wrote Come Little Children uh, for, for what's it? Hocus Pocus. That's right. James Horner. Mm-hmm. Uh, so originally, James Horner was not James Cameron's pick. Mm-hmm. James Cameron wanted... Enya. Okay. So, and you wouldn't do it. it I, so I feel like the running theme is that a lot of people were not interested in this project. That is correct. Okay. It did extraordinarily well for right? something that so few people wanted to be involved in. Yeah, for like, it was the highest grossing movie for a long time. It mm-hmm. was... Just insane mm-hmm. how well it did for a bunch of people not wanting to make this movie. Yeah. But yeah, so Enya said no. Mm-hmm. Repeatedly. She filmed uh she filmed herself tearing up a headshot of James Cameron. Yep. yep. <laughs> Mailed it to him. So James Horner wrote the soundtrack for the movie. Mm-hmm. James Cameron really didn't want any songs. Like he wanted a soundtrack, but he didn't want like songs in the movie and then Celine Dion showed up (laughs) not really so James Horner was like here's what we need though we really need like over the credits like this sweeping musical number like we really need I'm gonna write this song called my heart will go on Mm -hmm. um he called his friend uh Will Jennings and was like okay here's what we're gonna do Mm -hmm. we're gonna write this song Mm -hmm. we're not gonna tell James Cameron about it we're just going to go ahead and write this song, and we're going to approach, I don't know, Celine Dion to make the song. Mm-hmm. They wrote the song entirely in secret, <laughs> and James Horner played it for Celine Dion, and she didn't like Horner singing, so she was like, no, this doesn't seem like a project I should be involved in. And then her husband convinced her to do it. Mm-hmm. So she recorded a demo in one take. Of course she didn't. They waited until James Cameron was in a good mood, which apparently was not often because they had a uh, nickname for him. His his evil alter ego was Midge. Okay. M-I-J. Okay. Jim backwards. Okay. But uh, they waited until Midge was gone Mm -hmm. and James was there and they played him the song several times, the demo. And he was like, okay, fine. We can throw it in over the credits. People think I sold out, but whatever. And so then Celine Dion came in to record the studio version, which she did in one take. And (laughs) that was that. Nicely done, gentlemen. Thank you for bringing the penny whistle back into pop culture. So there's a survivor, Milvina Dean, Mm -hmm. who was uh, invited to the premiere. Mm -hmm. But she denied, saying, I saw A Night to Remember from 1958. I don't want to see this movie again. That was painful enough for me to see that. I don't want to relive this horrifying event another time. That seems perfectly totally fair. Sense. 
the stars in the sky when the ship was sinking mm -hmm. were not the same in the 3D version that they released in 2012 mm -hmm. as they were in the version we just watched. Okay. Because of Neil deGrasse Tyson. Thank you, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Kind of. So he was like, the stars wouldn't be... what they. He saw the movie, wrote James Cameron about it, spoke to him in person about it, mm -hmm. and then spoke to him in person again about it and was like, you've got to fix this. Those are not how the stars were. So just to get him to shut up. That seems to be a common theme with James Cameron. James Cameron changed the stars, but originally they had been in the formation of the heart of the ocean. Mm-hmm. So, like, he had intentionally made the stars to not look uh -huh. the way they were, but then he changed them around just to placate Neil deGrasse Tyson. I feel like if more people placated Neil deGrasse Tyson, science and mathematics would be getting more funding uh, in America. STEM would be doing better. There would be more females in science uh, being encouraged instead of being shut out. But... I mean, that's a fair point. We can only placate him so much. Which is to say, I am not in charge of the things that are involved in placating him. Fair. Tropes. Let's talk about the tropes. God damn it again. People falling in love 20 minutes after meeting. 20 minutes after meeting. Well, I mean, there's they had a little bit longer, but like... They like imprinted on each other. They imprinted pretty quick. Yeah. The use of slow-mo in this movie drives me a little crazy. <laughs> Particularly mm -hmm. when they're dancing mm -hmm. at one point. And we go into slow-mo, but, like, Rose's laughing is still normal speed. It's just so cheesy, and it's something I just... Yeah, I, it's not. Anytime crazy. that's done of, like, we're going into slow-mo, but the sound is still normal, is just, like, I sprain my eyes from rolling them. Don't do that. This is why it I've got a lazy eye eyes. right now. No. Two lazy eyes, I guess. <laughs> They're just stuck. No, honey. The the rich people are the evil people. That, yes. Uh, the fiance is an asshole. Who has like a henchman dude. His valet. His valet who yeah. is really more like a bodyguard enforcer dude. Um, Played by David Warner, who I always forget is in this movie. Mm -hmm. I love David Warner. Mm -hmm. I forgot he was in this. I always forget that that um, the actor who played Mr. Andrews. Yeah, that guy. That guy. I always forget that he's in it. I love him. He is great. And I remember his name without having to go to mm -hmm. IMDb on my phone at all. His name is... Uh, uh, hold on. It's just I'm having a total brain freeze right now. Oh, of course. It's Victor Garber. I knew that this mm -hmm. whole time. Victor Garber. I love Victor Garber. I always forget that he's in it. Yeah, no, Victor Garber's great. He's fantastic. He's really great in this with, a, like, the... He's doing a weird accent. Yeah, it's, like, slightly Irish at some points, but then at other points, it's just not there at all. And, like... But you know what? I'm not mad about it. I don't, no, I don't, me neither. I don't give a fuck. And he's, Victor Garber can do whatever the hell he wants. And it's fine. He's really great in so many things. And he's a, like he plays a really good bad guy. Mm -hmm. And so I love in this, like he's not a bad guy. Mm -hmm. And he's having a real hard time being like, well, I built a shitty boat. Yeah. When in real, it's like realistically, it wasn't a shitty boat. Mm -hmm. It was the iceberg. Like it was a Brutal iceberg. It's a brutal iceberg. And it scraped along the side of the boat for 37 seconds. Like, that yeah. is devastating. Yeah. Uh, research recently done has been like, no, any boat, even modern boats, like, that would sink them. Mm -hmm. That would be yeah, the bad. It would be the bad. And there has also been, like, other other studies about um, the quality of the rivets that were used. It, mm -hmm. uh, like, it didn't stand a chance. No. Like, it wasn't a bad boat, but, like, everything was working against it. Now, Literally everything was working against it. Had they hit the iceberg straight on, mm -hmm. I read, it would have damaged the boat, but would not have it sunk the boat because yeah. it wouldn't have, like, scraped alongside. They would have, like, Yeah, it wouldn't have hit, hit it. so many, like, it, like it, the way it hit, it opened up, like, the side of a bunch of the different... I don't yeah, no, not great. Not awake enough to articulate. It's all good. Um, I believe we have a disagreement about the 
uh, the door. We don't have really a disagreement about the door. My main thing about the door, like, everyone's like, oh, God, there's so much room for Mm -hmm. him to also fit on the door. But they show him, like, trying to get up. And, like, it's very clear that if he tried to hoist himself up on that door, it it was going to overturn. And they both would have been lost at sea. So, like, And that's that's my thing. Like, it's not a matter of space. It is a matter of uh, buoyancy and water displacement. Yeah. So all you kids out there on the tumblers who like measured out the size of the door and mark it out with tape on the ground and like snuggle up all your bodies inside the tape lines. That's not how it works. It's not as simple as that. Right. There's so much more to it. There is more to it. But she should have just gotten in the goddamn boat. She should have stayed in the goddamn boat. Stayed in the boat. And then he could have had the door and it would have been fine. Would have been fine. At the birthday party that I had. And now, like, now that I'm looking back on it, I don't know who she was talking about specifically, but my mom was in her sewing room uh, in the back of the house while the rest of us were watching the movie. And one of my friends, who was, like, maybe not enjoying the movie so much, I don't know what her deal was, um, but she kept walking back to my mom. Like, I, I think the first time she walked back and she was like, he died. And then she kept periodically going back every couple of minutes and going, he's still dead. He's still dead. That's so amazing. He's still dead. Is he, at this point, though, still dead? And more importantly, is your mother aware of it? You know, I'm pretty sure if I were to send her a message, right now she's in bed, that would be mean. We have a rule, we don't wake mom up. If I message her tomorrow and say he's still dead, she will assume that I'm talking about Titanic. That is wonderful. (laughs) Oh, man. So... I, upon reviewing, I think my opinion on this movie may have actually not changed at all. It's way too long. It's, I don't enjoy it. I don't want to see it again. I'm sorry I put you through this. No, it's fine. It's it's funny for the bit. <laughs> we're on a cruise, and it's great, and we're going to come back Stick unscathed. Yeah. I don't think we're going to hit any icebergs on our way. To In the, the Caribbean. To the Caribbean. Yeah, I think I we're going to I mean, I don't okay. know. Climate change is real, but... I don't think it's... I don't think it's that real. Do you want to rephrase that? I think it's real. I don't think it's that effective. I don't think it's that that I'm so tired. (laughs) I don't think it's going to put icebergs in the Caribbean. Climate change is very, very real and a very serious thing. Yes. But, yeah, no, I don't think it's going to put icebergs in the Caribbean. Yeah, So I don't think we're going to be... I don't think we have any worry... I'm not concerned about it, but which is why I thought this would be funny. It was very funny. Let's never watch Titanic again. Let's never again. watch Titanic again. And when we have kids, let's tell them there's a movie out there called Titanic. It is a colossal waste of your time. Let's just hope that by that time they could be watching it, all of the copies will be lost to history. They will be watching the remake which we are going to cast right now. <laughs> so the role of Jack Dawson is going to go to... Um, 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 the guy who plays Steve on Stranger Things. Perfect. I love it. I can't remember his name. I... My phone's all the way over there. <gasps> Hold on. Oh, I know. Uh, his name is Fred Armisen. No. No, no. Um, ben Schwartz's son. <laughs> oh, oh, of course. It's uh, Steve. Steve Harrington. Nope, that's his name on the show. Mm-hmm. Okay. <sighs> Kit Harrington. No. Kit Fitzsimmons. That's it, guys. Wrap it up. We want Kit Fitzsimmons in the whole movie. <laughs> Another, another Eddie Murphy style. Norbit. Norbit playing every role. Yep. Kit Fitzsimmons. Joe Keery. Joe Keery. Yes. So Joe Keery is going to play Jack. Um, Sourcy, I don't know how to pronounce her name. Sourcy, who's it? She was in Lady Bird. She oh, was in Atonement. Yeah. Cersei Ronan? Cersei Ronan. Is that her name? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, she'd be great. As um, Molly Brown. As Molly, the unsinkable <laughs> Molly Brown. No, um, no, that's only Kathy Bates. Kathy Bates is Molly Brown. She could do it again. She'll be fine. I will 
suggest maybe follow me on this. I need your eyes. Grumpy cat. <laughs> follow me on this. We're wackifying this movie. Oh, okay. I was trying seriously. I was going to suggest. I was going to do McCarthy. that. Melissa McCarthy, I'm sure, could be a great unsingable Molly Brown. I think so. I mean, I think she's but a, also, a good follow-up to Kathy Bates. Also, though, Grumpy Cat. I feel like Grumpy Cat would be Rose's mother. Oh, yeah, Ruth. Yeah, yes. that's a good point. Yeah. Grumpy Cat would make a great Ruth. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, the cat, all the fiancé. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say Waluigi. I love it. I thought we were wackifying it. My only note is that it might be too perfect. <laughs> it's perfect. I love it. Waluigi, 100%. Write it down. Okay. Definitely in the movie. Okay. For the captain, um, electricity gremlin. Okay. <laughs> See, here's my problem is now... I'm thinking about key and peel bits, and I think that's really all I'm going to be able to to okay. go with. So we should probably stop casting this movie before I put Jadinklage Morgoon in, in a role. Okay. Although the band leader would really be great Hear as me played out. by Jadinklage Morgoon, South Florida. Jammy. Jammy, jammy. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, guys, I think that's probably going to do it for us because I we're think gonna, we're, we're gonna, too sleepy. We're going to flush this out on the blog. Uh, yes, we are going to have a more serious recasting on the blog. I and think. then also totally wackadoo. And one. then one definite wackadoo that has so Grumpy look for Cat, two Jammy, new Jammy, casts. Jammy. Two new casts uh, on the blog, mm-hmm. which is Subverted Trope Cast at WordPress.com. Mm-hmm. Subverted Trope Cast dot WordPress.com. Yes. Uh, Subverted Trope Cast at gmail.com is our email address. Reach out to us. Send us an email. Send us a note. Do you have an idea for a normal or wackadoo recasting for this movie? I'd love to see it. Hit us up on the Twitter. At Subverted Tropes. Um, as always, uh, a serious and somber thank you to our logo designer, Gracie Boland. She's wonderful and talented, and we love her. You thank can you, find Gracie her Boland. on Instagram at a fandom doodler, and her Etsy shop is that crazy princess. As always, you can find us on iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher, YouTube, all the places where you get your podcasts. Uh, like, subscribe, tell some friends, get, give us a rating. Yes, tell all us, of that good tell stuff. Tell us how we do. So thank you guys very much for sticking with us this episode. Not quite as long as Titanic was. Oh, one actual one last piece of information. Mm -hmm. The part of the movie that's the flashback Mm -hmm. is two hours and 40 minutes long, which is exactly how long it took for the Titanic to sink. Wow. And that was intentional. And that was pretty cool. Wow. But now I'm going to go to sleep. I'm going to go to sleep now. Okay, let's go to sleep. Thank you guys so much for listening. You're our favorites. We will return to our uh, February celebration of Black History Month with guests next week. Yes. When we're back from our vacation. All right. Bye, guys. Bye.